Hi, welcome back to the Lam Rim. Uh, today, episode 12, uh, we're going to do something called visiting an art museum. And we've been talking about uh, how central it is to your practice. You know, all year we talk about how central it is to see emptiness directly. And now suddenly we've gone off a little bit different way. And we've said the crucial thing is that you have to have the direct experience of bodhicitta, you know and have this experience where you meet every living being. And I, I almost hesitate to talk about it too much because I don't want you to, I don't want it to start to become a thing in a book or something like that. It's an experience that you can have and that you should have, uh, and you can have it in this lifetime. And I, I again, I, I just repeat that, um, Imagine what it would be like if you met uh, billions of beings in 20 minutes or something and, and establish this bond with each one where I, you know, I will take care of you as if you're my own mother or you're my own father. And, and try, to f try to imagine what your life would be like if, if you could get to this experience. And that's where we are now. That's, that's really where we are. And then after this, we're going to go into the six perfections, you know, after we learn to, to think like a bodhisattva, after we have that, that motivation, you can have that motivation before, uh, but that's called sugarcane, right? Sugarcane means uh, it's a little bit hollow. It's like bamboo, you know. It's, it, you can have a serious uh, commitment to helping everybody in, in the world that you know of, uh, but it's a, it's a much different thing to have a direct personal contact with each being and make a commitment to them personally, each one. So keep that, at least keep that seed in your mind, you know, keep that, keep that idea in your mind that such a, somebody said, Geshe Michael said, this is possible, you can do it, you can reach that, okay? Uh, and that's crucial. So, so in this La Rim, it's almost presented as the main act, right? As the Rolling Stones playing. Then there's a kind of a lousy band that plays before. If you, if you enjoy concerts, uh, you know, it's, some, it's sometimes very frustrating to sit through the opening act because you're waiting for the band you really like, the one that you bought the ticket for. And then, you know, they come up for just a short time and then they go off and some other kind of not so good band closes for them. And so... Just remember, we've been going from, you know, the f steps of the path for a beginning person and medium person, and then we're going to get to the main event, which is trying to have that experience, and then we're going to do everything else, like the six perfections, okay? The six perfections come after the main event, uh, and becoming a Buddha comes after the main event, so it's, it's very interesting. Uh, somewhere in there, at the end, is Tantra, you know, is the diamond way. And trying, trying to use a way that you bec become a Buddha within one lifetime, you know, within this lifetime, you become a Buddha, guaranteed to become a Buddha during this one lifetime. But Pabonko Rinpoche says, even for that, the main act has to be this experience, this, this experience of, of a commitment to help every living being of a direct commitment with every living being that I will help you. I will help you get there. So then he talks about how necessary this, uh, this attitude is for the practice of the secret teachings to become a Buddha in one lifetime. And he's kind of on, he's still on that theme. And uh, we're going to be on that theme during this episode. This episode is called Visiting an Art Museum. I got Seiji and Tim here with their masks on mostly, and they are, that is okay, it's okay. and they are, they are thinking, Geshla, what's the art museum, what's that all about? Well, here we go. So we're going to start with a quotation from uh, a text by Arya Nagarjuna, the Arya, right? That's his nickname, uh, Pakpa, just the Arya. Rinchen Tamale, Dangni Dangni Jiten Di, Lame Chanju Tom Duna. Uh, this is a famous uh, piece of poetry from Nagarjuna's advice 
to an Indian king, Udayi Bhadra, and he's giving him suggestions about how to run his kingdom. I was thinking, uh, we're thinking to make a new management book with, with, with all of Nagarjuna's suggestion for kings. And uh, I think that would be interesting. Some, some publisher in Japan wants that. Uh, so maybe in my free time. So, Dagni Dani Jitendi, Lame Chanju Tobduna. If you want to reach uh, this place where you can emanate billions of bodies at the same time to help different people, so whether you want to reach it or you want the whole world to reach it, uh, this matchless state, Lame, Deitsawa, the root, the thing you have to get first is Changchu Sem. You have to get this wish for Buddhahood which now we know means making a direct connection with countless beings and making this commitment to each one of them uh, in, a, in, an inf in, a, in a finite amount of time, which is also kind of amazing. Riwang Gyalpo, Riwang Gyalpo means the king of the lords of mountains. Okay, Riwang Gyalpo, it means uh, Mount Sumeru, which, you know, it's like the highest Himalaya mountain, like Mount Everest, okay? Uh, Im immovable in, in, in Indian philosophy it's called dhruva which means like the axis of the entire world and the whole world is built around this uh, immovable axis so he says start tendang uh, you should make that wish to help everybody else as firm in your heart as, as the Himalaya mountains you can't move the Himalaya mountains uh, the, the earth moves, the, those mountains don't move. So your hope, your wish to help other people should be that stable. You should keep coming. It should be the core of your life. It should be the immobile, immovable core of your life. It's this attitude to want to help everybody. Okay? What we've been saying is interesting. If you had that attitude towards countless beings, then you would be sort of like the middle of the sun. Your, your mental state would be 25 million degrees. And, and then things like the virus, coronavirus, could not exist in your world. They would be burned up. They, they couldn't coexist with that, with that motivation. Okay? And I, I, I do think it's a cool idea that together uh, we could wipe out the coronavirus. You know, people say, oh, that's naive. Uh, but maybe the other approaches are naive. Okay. Uh, all right. Semdi menani, if you don't have this attitude, sangaki kirim gomha kang, gomba sakang la temotao tabo. So there are two stages to, to the secret teachings, the one lifetime Buddhism, Buddha teachings. There are two stages. They are. Kirim and Dorim, yeah, I'm glad I didn't offer you guys money. Uh, so Kirim means, uh, I don't know, raising the Buddha, creating the Buddha. And uh, Dzogrim means finishing the Buddha. And what it means is, uh, Kirim and Dzogrim. Uh, Kirim means uh, actually to make contact with divine beings, okay? To, to practice, meditate, do your yoga, you know, be nice to other people. And then one day you make contact with divine beings. So that's, that's, that's the first stage of the secret teachings. The second stage of the secret teachings is after you meet them, well, then they start instructing you and helping you. They have a unique insight into what you need because they can read your mind and they can see your future. So they're pretty good at suggesting uh, course of action for you. Uh, so that's called Zogrim, when you, you study with them and you change into a Buddha. That's called completion stage. So he's talking here, Sangaki uh, Kirim Gomba. If you don't have this attitude of, of Bodhicitta, if you haven't had that experience, then meeting those divine beings will be like walking into a museum and looking at a painting. Okay, so you can either, I went to Paris and we saw the Mona Lisa, you know, with Veronica and her sister. And uh, it, actually, we couldn't get too close to it because there were so many people. But imagine the difference between looking at a painting of Mona Lisa 
and meeting Mona Lisa. Okay, I think I would rather meet Mona Lisa. I'm going to ask her why she has that smile. You know, what, what, what was it that, what went on during the painting that she has this mysterious smile about? And uh, you can imagine how much more powerful it would be to meet Mona Lisa personally. Uh, so what he says here is, if you don't have this connection with every living being, if you haven't made this commitment, if you haven't had the experience of Bodhicitta directly, then when you meet the deities, it'll be like, it'll be like a tanka, like a painting or a statue. You know? and, and people will say, did you, did you see Tara? And you say, yeah, I've seen Tara. Uh, what did she look like? Oh, she was uh, you know, made of silver, and she was about this tall. I said, no, no, no. Did you meet Tara, not a Tara statue? Okay. So what he's saying is your practice of the secret teachings will be limited to meeting the statues and not Tara herself. Okay. Demo, demo Tara means you're going to become a spectator in the divine game and, and not experiencing it directly. Dzogrim Gomte, and then your practice of second stage Tantra, okay, which is called Dzogrim. Now, when the divine beings, when angels start teaching you personally, they will also work on your, on your plumbing, okay, on your prana, on your, on your channels, on your jing. They will start uh, working directly on, on your channels to open up your channels. That's one of the th methods they use. Okay, so you're going to meet them, and they will give you instructions. And the instructions written here for working on the inner plumbing, the inner channels, uh, I found them in John Brady's database, and thank you for supporting that. Uh, it's in a book called Chakya Chimbo, which is called Mahamudra, uh, which is sort of uh, amazing. Uh, Kape, the, the separate title is called Kape Chima. The section is Mahamudra, uh, which is the great, you can say the great seal, okay, which refers to uh, practice with your inner channels. This one's called Kape Chima, uh, the, another, another great example, okay. Uh, and it says, the text says, Ngup Dang, Gang Dang, Shilwa Dang. And he's quoting, uh, the, the, some elementary principles of pranayama, okay, of, of uh, how to open your inner channels by, through breath practice. So what it says here is, mup means uh, inhale, uh, gang means hold the breath, hold the prana, and then shilwa means to expel it. And those are three steps of four steps of a certain pranayama practice, okay? He only names... Three of, three of the steps of a certain pranayama practice. And I'd like to say something about this practice. Uh, lots of people in yoga studios or stuff like that, they, they read a book about uh, pranayama, and they try to do some of it. And I, I've had yoga teachers who, who encouraged me to, uh, you know, breathe in and then hold my breath as long as I can. And then they would actually count, and uh, they would... And, and, and it was weird because uh, I tried to do it, and I thought they knew what they were talking about. Uh, so I, I sincerely tried to do it. And um, then I realized it was all a mistake. You know, they read some book about pranayama, and uh, it doesn't do anything to help you to try to hold your breath as long as you can. If you want to do that, then do laps under, under the pool, under the swimming pool, and then see if anything happens to your... Buddha body or something, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, okay. And it gave me headaches, uh, it messed up my prana a little bit, it made me nervous. Uh, these are mistaken uh, practices, okay. I, the goal of this breath uh, practice here is uh, called Kevala Kumbhaka. Kevala means uh, spontaneous. Uh, kumbhaka means a... Uh, uh, a closed ceramic jar. And uh, so the goal is, uh, when you're close to seeing emptiness directly, uh, your inner plumbing will fix itself. And then when you see emptiness directly, 
uh, the prana does enter the central channel uh, in a very, as if you were shooting an arrow, okay? Uh, it enters the central channel. And then you might, uh, I don't know, in the weeks before that or the days before that, uh, you might be, for example, uh, at your university and you're sitting in the library and suddenly you realize you have not taken a breath for 10 or 15 minutes, okay? And that's Kevala Kumbhaka. And, and uh, you don't... Uh, here, when it says here, ngup, gang, shilwa, uh, you don't have to do that. Uh, that's what happens. You do breathe in, you do hold it indefinitely, and then you do breathe it out. But it's a, it's a very relaxed, spontaneous thing. And one of the best ways to get your prana to, 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 go in, to shoot into your central channel like an arrow and stay there uh, is to be nice to other people and to be kind to other people. So, you know, you don't have to... It, it's not really the best method just to hold your breath and not think about other people, okay? It'd be better to, to be nice to everyone around you, to be kind to them. And then that pranayama will take care of itself. You can still do the different pranayamas, but uh, the, what he's saying is the core of that practice is love for other people and wanting to get other people out of trouble, okay? All right, uh, Shilwadang. By the way, if you're interested in what's the fourth of the, of the four pranayama steps he mentioned here, because he doesn't mention the fourth one. It's called uh, Datar Gyendupamba. Uh, Datar Gyendupamba means uh, to shoot the arrow upwards in the central channel, okay? So he was kind of being very tantric, he left out the fourth one. Uh, he just gave us the first three steps, okay? And if you want to know about that, then finish your 18 foundation courses. Uh, you know, get some nice long rim courses under your belt, learn them. And then uh, get a proper initiation from uh, a teacher of the Diamond Mountain lineage, secret teachings, and... And then you can learn all this stuff in a very happy and healthy way, and it will be good for you. Okay, Shepatar Lungjor. Lungjor is kind of cool. Uh, Lungjor means pranayama, okay? Uh, Lung is prana, and Jor means ayama, uh, ayama. And this is one of those cases where two A's meet each other, and they become a long A, but you don't know if the two A's that met each other were short A's or long A's. And it's very important with pranayama to know that the, the first day was sh short and the second day was a long day. So ayama would mean not to control the breath. Ayama would mean perfect control of the breath to where you could actually hold it. And that's called jor. So one of the words for breathing practice in, in Tibetan is uh, lung jor, and it's here. It's, the translation is pranayama. So in Tibet, uh, when you worked with uh, steel or iron, uh, it was all done by hand. The guy was called a karwa, which means a blacksmith. And uh, there's a good, dirty joke about it. Let's do it. I mean, what if, what if we get the virus and, and this joke is lost forever? So uh, I'll teach you a famous tam tampe. Tampes are great ways to learn Tibetan. Tampes are, uh, what do you call those? Uh, clich cliche? No. Little sayings, little folk sayings. And uh, Tibetan has hundreds of them. And in fact, if you want to learn Tibetan well, it's nice to learn those little folk sayings because they reflect the ancient language because they don't change from generation to each generation passes them on to the next. Okay, so this is a break from the long rim. You're going to have it. Well, I'm not cutting the filming. But uh, <laughs> I want to teach you a dirty joke in Tibetan, okay? Just for fun. Okay, say, Chak Chepala. Garwa Ke. Chak Chepala. Garwa Ke. Kyakpa Chepala. Kub Ke. Kyakpa Chepala. Kubke. 
uh, if you want to cut steel, you're going to have to get a blacksmith. You're going to have to heat the rod and then hit it with a special instrument. And that's the only way to cut a piece of steel. But if you're going to the bathroom and a poop's coming out, then the best way to cut that is with your anus, uh, with your butthole, okay? So to translate it correctly, uh, the master at cutting steel is the blacksmith. The master at cutting poop is your asshole. Okay. I hope Veronica doesn't watch this episode. Uh, anyway, why are we talking about that? The, the guys who cut steel in Tibet, they have to have a bellows, right? They have to have an instrument that shoots uh, lots of oxygen onto the fire and makes it very hot. And so they, he, he makes a joke. He says, if you try to do this pranayama without bodhicitta, then you're like a black... Then, and you do all these special breathing things. You're just playing with some kind of bellows. You're wasting your time. You might as well buy a bellows and sit there and, and do this with it, you know, because it's going to have the same result, nothing. Okay, all right. Uh, by the way, there's no author listed for that Mahamudra text in the Tengir. Okay. Sangaki nyo ke kyang sem de lak tu tawale jungwayin. And he makes a very radical statement, okay? Uh, the secret way, diamond way, Tantra practice uh, is supposed to get you enlightened in one lifetime, as opposed to billions of years. And he says, what makes it faster is bodhicitta, okay? What makes Tantra faster is the attitude that you do it with. Uh, the thing that makes Tantra go faster is wanting to do it for other people, okay? Uh, then he quotes some famous lamas, Jankya uh, Roldor. Ki Purchong Ngawan Champa La Chesente. So Chankya Rupe Dorje, which his name here is abbreviated, uh, is a very, very famous uh, you know, scholar of Buddhism. He wrote a he's famous for a uh, four volume study of all the schools of Buddhism and and other schools. Uh, and uh, he had a teacher named Purchok Ngawang Champa, uh, who's a very, very famous logician, and we use his books at, in our Geshe program. La uh, Chusente, so uh, they lived in the 1700s, uh, the early part of the 1700s, and Changya uh, Rupe Dorje used to go to Purchok Ngawang Champa for classes. Um, These lamas had a connection with teaching the Chinese emperor in Beijing. And there are, there's still a temple there uh, where they would teach the Chinese emperor. And uh, when, and, and, and in secretly, Pabonka Rinpoche was uh, a reincarnation of, of these lamas. Okay? It's very interesting. Of uh, Changkya. Chang he, he, he was a, a reincarnation of the Lama who taught the kings of China, okay? And, uh, but there was a lot of political problems at that time, in, in his lifetime. So they, they made an announcement that he was an incarnation of the Pabonka line, which he was not. <laughs> and he was an incarnation of the Changkya line, but they didn't want to make it public. So he was misnamed his whole life. Uh, but it's interesting that he quotes himself, is what I'm saying. Uh, okay. La Chesente, Lama Chambe, Wang Chen, Nang Nang. Boy, now he, he says, Changkya says, when I go to my teacher and he starts teaching Tantra and he decides to teach an initiation, okay, and we are in the next Lamrim. Uh, retreat, which was supposed to be at Diamond Mountain in October. Uh, I'd like to repeat that we're going to be doing a Medicine Buddha initiation online with permission of Medicine Buddha. And 
and we're going to have teachings on uh, Medicine Buddha uh, with a famous Chinese master, a uh, good friend of mine. And uh, so you're welcome to come to that. Now, Chan Kiao is complaining. He says, I go to him for one of these high, like a Medicine Buddha initiation, and Wang Shedu, when it gets time for him to explain the Tantra to us, he goes off on Lam Rim, you know, and you can feel Chan Kiao's a little bit frustrated, you know. Like, we're supposed to get this very mysterious tantric teaching and, and I don't know, Pocho Rinpoche, he just goes off on Lam Rim. And we're all waiting for the secret stuff. And he just goes off on Lam Rim. Uh, Lam Rim Shatat. Shatat means he just teaches Lam Rim, nothing else. Shatat Namala, Shenge Tena, Sangake Sungshe Chegyu Mepatar. And if another person were to walk in the room, they would never it would never occur to them that this guy's giving a tantric initiation. <laughs> it's, it's a, if a stranger came in the room, I don't know, to deliver the refreshments. And, and he went back to the kitchen and they said, what's that, what's that guy teaching in there? And he said, ah, oh, he's just doing it in Lam Rim. You know, there's nothing tantric about it at all, you know. Sangaki uh, Sungshe, Chegyu Mepatan Nang Ma, okay? But, Ma means but, Kongi, Te Lamgi Ne Kembe Sung Yin. Bad Changya later said, I've, it finally occurred to me that when he's teaching Bodhicitta from the Lam Rim, instead of explaining the tantric initiation to us, that's the real initiation. You know, so that's cool. You know, that's really, that's amazing. And Ngak Bad Zay means, and he praised his Lama for doing that. Okay. All right, mm. I'm behind on this one. You guys hang in there with me. Chanju Gisem maybe ke doji nyanja ba shi gyan shu tobe tam jo chen be sen ne. This is a very strange story, okay? This is a hang sang. Hang sang means, wow, that's F, F amazing. Uh, <laughs> okay. So there was a Neljorpa uh, here means yogi, but it means a, a tantrika, a practitioner of the secret teachings. He was studying He Vajra. Uh, and the He in He Vajra for, for $20. What's it mean? Vajra means diamond, right? What's the He mean? Ah! It means He, okay. <laughs> hey, Dorje. Okay, it means, hey, K, K means, hey, hey, Doji. Okay. Don't ask me why, that's a long story. Okay, anyway, there was a guy practicing Hey Vajra Tantra, which is a very high Tantra, but he didn't have Changchu Gisem. He didn't have this motivation, okay? Gyunchu uh, Tope Tam, but he achieved the direct perception of emptiness, which here is called Gyunchu. Entering the stream, entering the stream, okay? Kyunshu, he achieved, entering the stream, seeing emptiness directly, same thing, okay? Uh, and then somebody came up to Atisha and said, oh my God, you know, today this guy, he, he, he saw emptiness directly. And, and you know, Atisha's like, well, well, why? You know, what was, he, what was he working on? And they said, well, he was working on his tantric practice. And uh, he saw emptiness directly, you know, almost by the way, almost by accident. Senbe, Yatsen did Zay means. Then Atisha said, Wow, I can't believe it, you know. Nai Chanju Gisem Mepelen. Yeah, he blew it. You know why? He didn't have the bodhicitta that I have. <laughs> he blew it. <laughs> it's very funny. Okay, I mean, we should have a skit, you know. This guy comes into Atisha and says, God, this guy just saw in this directly today. And Atisha says, well, what was he working on? And he said, Tantra. And he said, oh, man, he screwed up, didn't he? Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Why? He didn't have the body chitter that I have. Okay. Then, hey, Vajra, uh, same, same thing, right? Uh, it's Ke Dorje and He Vajra. Here's the Sanskrit for Ke Dorje. Same, the same word. He Vajra Gomba Nyawa Dawa Yangya. And then he said, 
geez, it's too bad he didn't have uh, bodhicitta, but he's lucky he didn't go to hell. You know, he's lucky he didn't go to hell, which means he, he was trying to practice tantra without love for other people. And, and this is such a weird conversation. Hey, Atisha, this guy just started doing this directly. Yeah, what was he working on? Oh, he's working on tantra. Oh, poor guy. I'm so sorry. You know, he should have had bodhicitta. But, but, but he's lucky he didn't go to hell, you know. And it's a weird, it's a weird thing to say. It's an amazing paragraph, okay. All right, dadung deyan takshe yinki. But, so the guy came out good, you know, it was pretty good. He did pretty well. He didn't go to hell. He just saw emptiness. Yinki chanjugi sem di mena, yidam to mambangang, dun dun dug dug mangna, dug zhe dang nyawa sok su kewe jing kewa mangshing. Then he says, uh, you know, there are people who do a tantric practice centered on a fierce deity like Yamantaka. Here he gives the, he doesn't name them, but uh, for example, Yamantaka or someone like that. Uh, and they, they do this mantra over and over. And he said many of them, due to the power of this fierce deity's mantra, uh, if they don't have bodhicitta, they are born in the hell realms, or they are born as a dukte means uh, like a fierce preta, like a fierce spirit. Okay, they, the mantra has the wrong effect on them. Uh, the fierce mantra has the wrong effect on them because they don't have love. They try to do tantra without love. Okay, and then it backfires, and they they get these weird results. Okay, all right, chushur ke shibdak. Uh, and by the way, the Shibdak means uh, local boss preta deity, uh, lo local boss preta. Okay, so according to Buddhism, uh, there are spirits who run the spirit show in different localities, like I don't know like a city block or two city blocks, there's a local spirit who's kind of in charge of the spirits there, okay? A she means uh, a locality, like a, a few blocks in a city. A dak means the boss, the boss spirit, okay? So she, and it's pronounced shibdak. We pronounce the B uh, shibdak. So anyway, uh, he says, uh, by the way, the shibdak around here was someone who blew a three-year retreat, <laughs> okay? They did a three-year retreat and they messed it up. And they were reborn as the Shibdak, uh, the big number one preta around here. Okay, just for your information, if you try to do Tantra without Bodhicitta, then you could have these disastrous results. Okay. Kongi gyunshi tope ge doki nyancho pa de la chanjo ge sam yuna tse der tsangya yu gyu yin yang if that tantrika who was practicing Hevadra had had uh, bodhicitta and then uh, saw emptiness directly, you know, say there tsang gyagyu yin, he had a good shot, he had a good chance of getting enlightened in one lifetime, in that lifetime, yang, kola tsang gyagyu tsudu te menki dubu topa semde mepe len, but instead, he had a Hinayana result of his tantric practice. He got a Hin What was the Hinayana result? Yeah, he saw emptiness, but on a lower track. He saw emptiness directly, but on a... Nobody says that here, but it's assumed, okay? Tate menki debu topa semde mepe len. By the way, len here doesn't mean to tong len len, and it doesn't even mean to give an answer, like chi len, question and answer, but it means... It's the fault. The fault, what went wrong, was that he didn't have bodhicitta. Uh, then, <laughs> I, you can kind of see uh, Paboka Rinpoche leaning back, and he says, you know, this is why the Dharma is so incredibly profound, you know. He just kind of leans back, like, we're going to lean back. This is the last sentence of this episode. And he's, and he's just kind of cogitating, and he says, uh, 
Oh, just stop, but then then let's say, you know, when they say the Dharma is unbelievably deep, you know, that's the kind of thing they're talking about. Somebody could practice Tantra, see emptiness directly, and 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 blow it. <laughs> they could blow it by seeing emptiness directly. That man, Dharma is God, who could figure it out? You know, and then that's the end of the episode. See you on the next episode. <laughs>